and he ends up dropping the interception. But with the blitz, the Lions get some pressure, so there's really no time to be like, I don't want to go there. That's where the ball's going. And it was C.J. Gardner-Johnson that stuck out to me. That was absolutely beautiful, making an impact. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back to take another look at the All-22 from this Lions-Chiefs game. And today, we are switching to the defensive side of the ball, just like our offensive video, but this time on the defensive side. And, man, we're going to show a lot of good in today's video, some bad as well, but a lot of good. I wanted to showcase some of these new players, some of the versatility, some of the coverage things that stuck out to me, and sometimes just plays where I was like, hey, man, this is a guy making a play, and I just wanted to show that. Of course, not everything is going to be in this video. This is a little bit trimmed up because it's going to be a little bit on the shorter side in terms of I don't want to make this video super long. And it was also kind of a shortened week for me. So going forward, I would expect that we're going to have longer videos or at least more videos taking a look at this All-22. But then also on top of that, probably a little bit earlier in the week as well. Hopefully like Tuesday, Wednesday. Maybe we sprinkle some into Thursday. But hopefully quicker to it and then we can get on to the next game. But I'll start doing that likely today, taking a look at the Seattle team and then we'll have some sort of preview down the road of what I kind of expect for this upcoming game like we did for the Kansas City game which I think dropped like the morning of so anyways last week was weird because they played on Thursday the point is is we're here man we're here to take another look at this game but this time on defense and man there's a lot of things that I think we could touch on in this game and I'll try to fly through some different things that stood out first thing in terms of coverage we definitely saw Lions play a lot of zone coverage now we saw some carryover from last year and some of the you know the matchup principles that we saw where you know if the inside slot releases vertical the linebacker would pass it to the safety and the safety would pick it up now all of a sudden that underneath you know linebacker would become a zone coverage and then we have the one free safety on the play so we saw things like that but we also saw a heavy mixture of cover four in this game we saw some disguise look like we saw some inverted coverage defensively but also a lot of cover four and clearly the lions had a strategy for this game now we know they don't like playing spies so pass rush lanes were key once again and i wouldn't say it was perfect there were times where the quarterback got away from us a little bit but i will say and i want to point this out real quick ali mcneil's athleticism he looks really good athletically helped us a ton in some of those pass rush lanes because like this play where you see him aligned in a 2i the inside shade of a guard his ability to flow laterally so if Aiden Hutchinson for whatever reason crashed inside he could flow back to the outside and help us kind of fill in those pass rush lanes I thought his athleticism gave us a really big hand up and you really saw it when guys like Pascal would check in on obvious pass downs early downs we had some hit and miss you know some of it I thought you know from the linebacker to the defensive backs in terms of maybe just a little bit quicker communication Clearly, the Lions were trying to plaster receivers, so as soon as the play broke down, guys in your area, pick them up. If you're in zone coverage, pick them up carry that guy you know you can't let someone run free we did a pretty good job of that aside of really like one or two plays there was one with Jack Campbell and Brian Branch kind of covering the same guy but you know I thought we did a pretty good job in terms of pass rush lanes you could see how they would adjust in terms of trying to get basically two-way goes it felt like for some of their D linemen like okay let's get him singled up on a guard let's get him singled up on a tackle while on the flip side we saw Kansas City start to utilize some of their tighter alignments from their tight ends or their slots and it would kind of play as like a little bit of a chip or at least it would force our edge rushers to work a little bit wider and then other times it was the discipline like okay I got to attack through or to the outside you know that way we can fill here properly so there was a lot of that going on within this game some was good some was bad but the coverage standpoint is what I really want to start with first here now I'm not going to show every play from like Aiden Hutchinson he went crazy he absolutely went crazy and you know maybe future weeks we can do that we'll have a little more time but he was outstanding in this game I'll show a couple plays where I was like look at Hutchinson here but man he was great and this was a team with one of the best offensive lines in football one of the most efficient running games last season now without Travis Kelsey they ended up running the ball more in the past so that can have an impact on it but you're still talking about one of the most efficient rushing teams in football that had a poor rushing average Patrick Mahomes had a poor completion percentage by his standards again not having Travis Kelsey was a part of that but it also probably adjusted how the Lions play defensively like, for example, leaving their cornerbacks at times kind of on an island on the outside. Like, hey, we're going to do some cover four. You may not have help over top. You may have to handle that responsibility a little bit. We also had some breakdowns in coverage. We had some in the red zone that popped up. I think we'll showcase one in here. Not going to go through all of them, but we had a couple little things like that that did happen. Other times, Patrick Mahomes' eyes, whether that be from the linebacker position, whether that be maybe C.J. Gardner-Johnson on a, I think it was a Tampa 2 look where they got to the corner on us. You know, maybe fouling the eyes a little bit too much there. That's just a good quarterback being a good quarterback quarterback let's show some plays let's go I need to calm down I'm pumped for this I'm pumped for this let's do this okay here we go let's start with 
Cover four, look, this is really first off just kind of showcasing a player, Alex Anzalone. I thought this was beautiful coverage on this play. And I thought for the linebacker position, for example, like Derek Barnes, what he did against the run was outstanding. I mean, that guy, he looks so comfortable in this defense right now. He plays so fast. He's so fast flowing. I thought last year he took massive strides. And then again, he just came out week one and was just prepared. Like he was ready to go. He was locked in against the run. And even some of his coverage drops, specifically underneath, you know, from a slot alignment, Wow. I mean, I was like, that looks really good. Like, he's forcing Mahomes to get away from that pass. Again, not perfect, but it was pretty darn good. So, anyways, we'll start with Alex Anzalone, though, first. And we'll start with kind of this cover four look from the Lions defensively because this is what we did a lot in this game. And I do think some part of this was really putting some of these outside corners on an island, believing that maybe that wasn't going to be the strength of this offense. I think you could argue it's a below average receiving core if you just went top down without Kelsey. You could argue it's below average. So, you kind of ask yourself, like, okay, where do we need to trust like hey our guys are just gonna win this matchup I think at outside corner you could do that now what I did like about all the quarters coverage is I thought a guy like Cam Sutton was very comfy like this is where he looked very comfortable in coverage obviously he had the pass interference but really outside of that he looked really good and even that one wasn't too bad but just how smooth he is how patient he plays in coverage and we know he's not like the big athlete that's super fast and he's just gonna match up with anybody press him up and let him go to work he's not that He's a very smooth, patient, can sit outside, squeeze a route really well. Like, that's what he does. So I thought this coverage made him look really good. Now, we could start here with Aiden Hutchinson at the top of the screen, beating the right tackle on the first play. Cade Mays had a rough one at right guard. We had a lot of success over there as well. But I really want to take a look at Alex Anzalone here in coverage underneath. So you have your three underneath defenders in this coverage. And I love the way that against this stack, look at him drop, jump on this little outbreaking route on the tight end, undercut, and pass break up there on Gray. And he looked pretty good in that sense. Like, he was getting to his spots quickly. He was very decisive in this game. That's what stood out to me. You know, when to match up. Okay, there's a guy here. They're overloading. I need to communicate. Do I need to take away the wheel? Like, you kind of get that with Alex in terms of he's going to communicate and be decisive. Even if things maybe don't go extremely well, He's going to be decisive to what he decides to do. So you, you kind of feel comfortable when you have that piece on the field. Now, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, we got to highlight this guy. Maybe more than anybody else in this video because he's a new addition. We've seen a lot of these guys before, but he's a new addition. But also, my goodness, the impact that he made was massive. Now, sure, he was a safety out there, and we gave him a big chunk play. Yes, he was part of a breakdown in the end zone where we had, you know, the safety step down, play inside. Then we had Jerry Jacobs on the outside. We had two guys covering one. We had that happen. But, man, he adjusted, as we'll take a look at the end of this video. He adjusted to coverage, and he almost had an interception. And he also had a pass break on the final drive. And then, early in the game, stopping the run. This is what we were getting out of C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And this one was really clean. Again, kind of just showcasing the player here on this jet sweep look. Uh, Jerry Jacobs getting out here on the edge, but still playing under control. But look at how he plays this. this is, I just want to I just want to focus on number two here. Watch how he plays. Watch him slow himself down right here. Watch him attack that corner, and then watch him stop himself. Bang! That was so beautiful. I was like, dog, I gotta show this. Okay, I just have to show this play. Look at this. What? Yo, it... We saw this. We've seen this in the past that CJ does things like this. But this is beautiful. I mean, that's that's as good as it gets. And then the finish, right? He doesn't get out of it. This one may even be a better tackle from CJ Gardner-Johnson. They get two pulling offensive line. We get a little pull two look here from the offensive line. You can see it right there. And then also on this play, you have Alex Anzalone. You're going to see him fill. You can see him fill, follow the pulling offensive line and being decisive in that sense. And then on the backside, you have Jack Campbell filling in. But how about CJ Gardner-Johnson again? You see how he doesn't immediately get to the outside and just force it back inside? He kind of sits here in this lane. Now, the lineman kind of tripped up a little bit. So he kind of sticks in here with an extra pulling lineman. And it's kind of thrown off. They're kind of two blocking the same guy. Charles did a great job of setting the edge in this game. I don't think I showcased enough of those plays. He did an excellent job just being a, just popping guys at the point of attack. But he kind of sits inside a little bit. Obviously, the running back's then forced to go outside, trying to follow those pulling blockers, but they're kind of just a mess in there. And watch him just mash the running back here, slide outside, and then actually get, I think this was a TFL, just a clean tackle. He made his presence felt immediately by doing things like this. So, I just wanted to start off with some fire plays there from C.J. Gardner Johnson. I love that. Now, this is just one of those examples, and unfortunately, I kind of cut it off so you won't get to see the entire play here. Um, and, and so, that's kind of unfortunate. But it's, it's where one of those plays where Patrick Mahomes was able to break out of the pocket. The good thing that we could start with is the coverage on this play because it was excellent across the board. We're going to talk about versatility. But how about C.J. Gardner-Johnson diving down and taking this away? Cameron Sutton sitting on the outside, so playing really well 
route together. It kind of cut off, but Derek Barnes jumping that outbreaking route was the first place that Mahomes wanted to go with this pass, and he took it away, so he forced him away from that read. I mean, he was flying, cutting that thing off on the tight end, so that was beautiful as well. And then obviously Alex Anzalone, you could see him rolling into that swing route, taking that away. So coverage is really good here, but again, if you're not going to play a spy, and you do have him manned up a little bit. I think that was part of the reason that we played some zone or try to keep guys free. Things like this can happen. Charles Harris goes to the inside here, does get a little bit of pressure, but then, of course, when he goes to the inside, now it's going to force other guys to be able to contain. Benicio Jones does a nice little job, I think, playing like that cat and mouse game a little bit here on the interior. You can see Hutchinson kind of breaking down on the backside, but then you kind of put a guy like Levi in a tough position here where he's got a lot of room to fill, and also, if you notice, Derek Barnes on the play kind of plasters his tight end as Mahomes takes off. And we saw this a lot, right? Instead of dropping off and taking the quarterback, their mission as coverage was like, hey, if you got this guy, when he starts to move, plaster your receiver. Don't let him get off, right? Don't don't chase the quarterback. Blaster that dude, and then we'll go get the quarterback. And I think that made a ton of sense um, because we've seen so much that he can do off schedule, especially to Travis Kelsey, but without Kelsey. Like, if we can win early, and we got to take that guy away, now we just need consistent consistency from how we're playing our run lane. Here was another little look in terms of versatility from this defensive front. You can see across the board, you know, you got a four eye here, you got a zero, you got a four eye inside shade of the tackles here, kind of showing like a gap and a half look, and then they're going to kind of slide with the motion. Now, here's the big thing here. Look at this. First off, take a look at these defensive linemen, Benito Jones, boom, handling business. You can see John Kaminsky, but it's really, again, you can point to Alex Anzalone on this play. Again, you got Aline McNeil basically playing from the B gap, through the B gap to the C gap almost. You can see him extend there and lock out, and that kind of keeps a guy like Alex Anzalone clean when you have less bodies, or I shouldn't say less bodies, but you have lighter bodies. You have CJ in the box. You have Kirby in the box. You got lighter bodies. You're going with a five-man front across the board. Um, so, you know, you got a little bit lighter bodies in terms of the second level defensively here, but you look at the pulling lineman. Again, Alex slides with it, but having Charles Harris on the outside doesn't shoot to the outside, fills inside here, and takes away like a little reverse they were trying to set up. I also did like how on the backside, CJ Gardner Johnson, you could see how they pull away from him, but he didn't get out of his spot. Like he was still, you could see right here, he's still disciplined, keeping an eye on what's going on, and then he slides over. So he did have a cutback lane that he could have taken away right here. And that's what I loved about CJ, man. He was right there to fill. He's really good at filling within the box. We've seen that in the past. And here's another look where the quarterback kind of takes off on us just for a few yards, though. So this one wasn't too bad. But I think, again, you have to look at the coverage that the Lions had across the board in terms of communication. First off, you can see bottom of the screen, we got basically on an island, Cam Sutton working against the receiver here playing some off coverage right that's what he normally does but he is still on an island in that sense but it's really the communication to me within the interior of the defense on this play from Brian Brash to Alex Anzalone to Derek Barnes let's take a look at the communication they have we'll start with Brian Branch you can see the little drag route across he passes that off to Derek Barnes and then he's going to work up the seam so I thought that was a big part as well because they weren't just running crossing routes they were running a crossing route and then they were trying to get and sit behind the linebackers so for that middle linebacker in this case in Barnes it was so crucial that they would drop and get some depth to take that away so across the board here this was one of the best examples of just really good flow from the offense right both of, you know there's a release vertical here so obviously the cornerback is going to be taken out of the play Alex Anzalone sees that he dives down on the swing route to take that away meanwhile though here from the linebacker position you can see Derek Barnes get some depth take that away branch passes it off dives down Alex Anzalone takes away the swing route and now it comes down to really CJ Garner Johnson who's in that safety alignment kind of playing on that hash diving down from that cover four look and then able to come down and make this stop and it was really a limited gain and I think that's what the Lions were looking for right they wanted to control Patrick Mahomes in terms of don't let him break loose and go crazy but really we got to plaster these receivers and I thought the little things that they did in coverage like that the communication was stressed and you knew that coming in they're going to stress your communication we had a play early i didn't show kirby joseph and they basically had like a stack and then the receiver motioned in and then he was stuck on the outside and then as the receiver broke back inside to outside he ended up stepping in front of the route and it broke and got him and it had a completion he responded to that though and covered well a little bit later in the game when he was matched up in man but they're not only testing you in man coverage they're testing you in zone they're overloading your side and sometimes they got us sometimes they did but man they stressed it so this was i think an excellent opportunity for our communication this year's sponsor for the football season i'm very excited about this and i really appreciate this opportunity we have partnered with bet us man and bet us is a leading online betting platform that offers a wide range of sports betting and casino games. Now, BetUS has a reputation for the reliability, 
their security and their excellent customer service and there's a lot of ways to get in touch with them and it's very easy to sign up so all you have to do is click the top link in the description they're hooking you up with some nice bonuses so if you click that link top of the description you can claim some nice bonuses all you have to do is sign up it's like two pages very easy to sign up then you can claim your bonus you can see there's multiple different bonus options you make your deposit and if you make a minimum $100 deposit you can get a 125% match on that deposit so they're hooking you up at us has a lot of different ways to bet so it's not just football i mean they hit on all the major sports football basketball baseball soccer i mean hey if you're into soccer there you go heck they got esports on here man there's tons of different ways to do it whether that's you know game props pre-game betting whether that's over unders whether that's future bets live betting as well including parlays so you can build out your ticket and do things that way if you're a returning member there are five currently re-up promotions there are six listed currently sign up promotions through BetUS, you become a loyal member to BetUS, and this leads to other perks, including free payouts, free monthly tournament entries, bigger bonuses. Shout out to BetUS. The goal will take a first little look here at Brian Branch. We don't need to stick around uh, for this play too long. Another one of those quarters looks from the defense. You can see kind of what they're creating here on the top here. But you see Brian Branch working in that inside slot first and then breaking to the outside. Mahomes does a really good job with his eyes. Man, he is super disciplined, so he's going to find things late uh, going through his progressions. He's really good at getting through those progressions while showing a lot of body language, eyes, movement. We talked about that. So here he's watching kind of this tight end release up the seam. And uh, Brian Branch kind of sitting with that a little bit. Then he late comes back over here to the outside slot but branch does a nice job diving on this making a nice tackle jack campbell gets in as well limits this for a short little gain and i think that was the big thing right don't give up the explosives and get ourselves in trouble limit the explosives as best as possible but speaking of that this is where we gave up one of them a third and 17 now this is not ideal but the lions try to give a little disguise look so we've seen what they've done in coverage right we've seen all the cover four looks and it kind of looks like that pre-snap now this isn't the only disguise they did but it kind of looks like that pre-snap right it's like okay i could see that they're doing maybe the same coverage again but the lions roll out of that they're actually going to roll into a cover two look defensively here they're just going to invert it so both their cornerbacks are going to become your deep safeties on this play and then your two safeties become underneath defenders so now i got their five underneath defenders here so they give Mahomes a much different look here and this was the near interception from Jerry Jacobs I wondered watching it live I'm like how is Jerry even out there this is how it happened um, and you can see again utilizing the eyes so they run kind of this deep curl route out here and it kind of forces Jerry Jacobs to pause for a second and maybe he didn't necessarily need to right I mean this is kind of congested but he did he paused for a second and then he took off over top to kind of take away this backside route and he was just a step late to you can see him stop right there then take off and we were just a step late to it was a really nice ball and it was a good job using the eyes uh, you can see also Hutchinson getting some pressure here on the right guard uh, from that defensive tackle spot I love this when we're able to go to these obvious pass down situations with Pascal with John with James like pass rush Lansky is so fluid you see it at the top here with Charles and John Kaminsky you know one working the outside of the guard and you can see when he breaks to the outside Charles is able to flow back inside so you just get that fluidity there and then for Aiden Hutchinson you kind of get that bull rush setting up the right guard boom and then he's able to kind of rip off it late as he starts to anchor down right there this was the one this is one one of the breakdowns that we really had defensively here and this was you know in the red zone and man they are tricky there they are they are tricky in the red zone or these goal line spots they are difficult to deal with and uh, you can see they kind of overload this side one you can see they have three receivers already over here then they have this little fast motion from the running back so now they have four receivers over there so they have four options on one side versus a one-on-one -on -one here on the back side with jerry jacobs kind of running that face and uh, you can see with the communication here a little bit of a breakdown brian branch sees that motion he kind of drives over here to the flat you can see that and what they do is they run like a dig route and then right underneath it they sit the re they sit the tight end down you can see See how that's going to cause an issue here as Kirby follows that the inside route is followed by Alex Anzalone and by the time he passes that off and gets back you can see the space that's created I am branch you know he's sitting in this flat he's not sitting inside and here's where I think you have that little breakdown because branch is flowing to the flight you can see right here he starts to dive on it but he's not even covering that dude in the inside and that was one of those examples we had a few of those really good at it and I guess the positive is brought is uh, Ali McNeil getting some pressure here on the right guard as well getting some push back into the pocket but it just so happens that they you know got open on that play and one thing that's interesting to me here i think even someone was talking about it in the stream is that you know a lot of teams when you get inside the five everybody just mans up and then whoever doesn't rush kind of just spies over the middle of the field but i think two things first out coming out on the shotgun from the four yard line and basically having five weapons that you can throw to instead of just having two guys release out of a goal line formation it changes that up on top of it lions also seemingly are wanting to keep eyes on mahomes instead of you know just manning up with everybody having an option that's available here so i think that 
that can lead to some of this kind of breakdown where you're all trying to communicate and you can find these little holes in a tight window. Now, one thing with Benito Jones coming in and playing in this game or starting in this game for the Lions is that we know about Benito. He's very explosive. So I think from an athletic standpoint, it made sense that he got the nod this week and he also played well in the preseason. But you can see him here working on the center. He's able to keep uh, Derek Barnes clean. Now, I thought one thing that was super impressive was leaving Neal was how quickly and how well he was able to move laterally. And it helped us a ton against a lot of these wide plays where they try to stretch it outside like this stretch run on this play. I thought Ali McNeil's ability to move laterally helped us a ton because he was able to step in front of these blocks. But for a guy like Benito Jones, this is pretty good. You know, he, he's he's allow, he's keeping basically Derek Barnes clean on this play to fill, but also not get picked up by an offensive lineman. So that allows him to fill his gap and then scrape off that. And you can just see the speed where he's flying downhill. And I thought that is was a good play from uh, Benito Jones. Also, you have, you can see here, John Kaminsky kind of working through the outside of the guard, but still keeping on the edge. And then Brian Branch does a nice job getting in. Jerry Jacobs comes flying in, hitting the receiver or the, or the lead back on this play. Look at that. Boom. Oh, my goodness. So he forces that thing back inside. Now, I talk about the patience from the cornerback position for what the Lions were doing defensively. Here's a great example of it from Jerry. He's lined up with the tight end on this play. This is Bell 81. And look how patient he plays this in coverage. He's getting pushed to the outside. And I just love how patient this was, man. He sits down with it. He contests this extremely well. So I wanted to showcase that. Then on the top of the screen, you had a little bit of an inside pass rush there. Again, trying to be fluid with those pass rush lanes. Here, when you have a Lee McNeil inside of the offense guard, I just felt like it gave us some good fluidity. That means Benito Jones kind of was able to work one-on-one -on -one with a guard, but you know, you, you didn't necessarily get a much of a win there outside of a bull rush and I think that was a balance too of like okay we want to get Ali McNeil that matchup but at the same time his movement skills does give us some flexibility because he's going to fill outside really well so it gives us some flexibility on the backside as well so I think that was a part of it um, but with that being said, Charles Harris gets a little bit of heat, but I really had to point out Jerry Jacobs on this play. And again, this is kind of look that we saw a lot last year, right? The receiver runs vertical, he passes the safety, and now Derek Barnes can drop off and become kind of that underneath zone defender, and it almost looks like cover one now at this point. And I think a big part of this is you're not getting help on the outside. As a cornerback, yes, you're playing off coverage, and again, I think a big part of that is who you're playing and kind of leaning into it, but you're not getting help here on the outside, right? I mean, you're, you're basically on an island. These safeties aren't in a position to get over top, and allow you to be aggressive so you're playing a little bit of a different way but you are on an island on the outside so I think that was a part of it the Lions were willing to do that and, and kind of lean into okay over the middle of the field we got to keep someone free we can't have you know a linebacker chasing and taking linebacker out of the play while if we're playing man coverage and then a safety dropping back deep and then all of a sudden Mahomes takes off and there's no one with even eyes or a chance to get down to the quarterback kind of like when he took off and CJ Garner Johnson that cover four look was able to get in and make that stop it's like we have to keep eyes free specifically on the inside this was one of the uh, clean plays from Brian Branch, man. We have to give him some love because, man, he looked good. And I think it was immediate right here. You see the communication with the inside release here from the outside receiver. And then Brian Branch seamlessly kind of picks up the slot. You can see him kind of match that up. Also, again, Cam Sutton sitting on the outside on this play. But this was just so clean from Brian Branch. That's just all I want to point out on this play. Just look at Brian Branch working here, man. So he takes the inside guy. Very smooth. Very clean. And then as soon as you're going to see it right here, boom, he breaks. Sticks in front of that from the outside leverage and then he drives down underneath on this pass and we started we saw the pick six happen in a somewhat similar way a little bit later in the game um, but then also you see Jerry Jacobs recognized like okay there's a single receiver Alex Anzalone's taking the flat he drives down on this drag route and he actually gets a in a pretty good spot working here against the tight end he gets in a pretty good spot on this play um, so there's that side of it as well but Brian Branch was right there he's seeing everything at the same time and he's able to dive on this and and again be in a really good position to help us out so when we got the pick six you had a very similar look from him here we get another little disguise look and they utilize Jack Campbell this time as that Tampa 2 linebacker defensively but notice they're giving different looks they started to do this I felt like as the game went on rolling a second safety kind of into the box a little bit you can see here with Kirby Joseph but not necessarily keeping them there now we started to see some cover three we even saw it on the last possession we almost gave up a big chunk on a you know crossing route so we we've seen that we start to see them do things like that but they would also still roll out of it so they give you a single high look and then they'd roll out of it there's another play we'll take a look at later where the safety rolls down and the other one pops back up uh, but in this case Kirby Joseph is just going to back out they're going to go into this Tampa 2 look after giving a single high look pre-snap but man look at Jack Campbell and this was this was his pass breakup but it was so smooth that I think we just have to take a look at it again so they do the little fast mode they do a little motion across there with Sky Moore on the play and as you're going to see they end up bringing a third receiver through 
through the line of scrimmage. You're going to see the tight end here. He's going to come through uh, right off the guard. And with that, you're going to see Jack Campbell. I think his awareness on this play. This slot receiver is going to run a fade route. And look at Jack Campbell, right? So there's a the play fake. Finds the slot route. Reading through that, he notices that it's a fade and where it's going, it's going to hit that sideline. So immediately as he sees that, his eyes go back and find the quarterback. Now he's looking at the quarterback and uh, Mahomes comes back to the middle pass. And then it's just the hips disgusting I mean this is a linebacker that's six foot four and a half we're talking about this is disgusting to see this thing go and turn into a fade route open himself back up oh my goodness I just had to show that we had to take a look at that one again actually what I wrote down for this play was just that the Lions have some dogs man and it's just the guys that they've been bringing in are just dogs and what do I mean by that well how about Jerry Jacobs just lighten up the lead blocker you know to set the edge on a run that's what I mean right we don't see Jay's a dog we saw him hitting at the beginning of this Brian Branch a dog we already saw his tackle but how about this one they do hit us with a little trap play here you're gonna see it now hey give some credit to benito jones you're gonna see they're kind of sealing off benito jones on this backside center here but watch this look at look at it kind of bench press the center on this play watch this boom sit down and then just drive him back extend and he actually ends up getting in on that tackle that was beautiful from benito jones they try to kind of seal him off but they're gonna set up this trap play with levi right here so the lineman take off to the second level and you're gonna see again jack campbell kind of sees the pulling offensive lineman so does alex here jack campbell boom takes on the, the the leading offensive lineman and then alex anzalone can kind of fill in off the backside but it's brian branch who steps in no hesitation we've seen this from all our good slot defenders and he handles that look at them he's not he doesn't allow himself to get you know basically pinned down blocked by this receiver coming off the backside and we've seen this because we did that to them right we had our receiver step in pick up that block and all of a sudden it springboards a run and when we saw in this game when the Lions were at their best stopping the run, we saw those interior defensive linemen really be able to keep them clean as best as possible up to the second level, allowing our linebackers to flow fast. And like we see on this play with Levi, kind of in that four-eye look where he's attempting to play through the tackle, B-gap almost to C-gap, and then on the edge you have the nine technique with Hutchinson, and then on the opposite side you have Charles on the outside. So you're really asking Brian Branch to try to stay clean here with what we have on the front. And because of that, Branch aggressively steps in makes the stop Brian Branch starts to slide down does not let that happen he slides in there and boom he's making that hit so you gotta love that from Brian Branch and I just wrote it out as man we got some dogs in there all right that was a dog type of play there from Brian Branch as we're speaking of Brian Branch let's take a look at his pick six because this was beautiful so you're gonna again see the short end motion there and now watch on this play so I didn't know what routes they were actually running originally but man just Ooh, look how fluid this is for Brian Branch, man. It just looks so good. The communication looks so good here. All right, watch this. All right, so here's the motion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I'm seeing on this play. So you're going to see his receiver starts to show that he's breaking inside. So watch Brian Branch's eyes on this play. He starts to see that, okay, he's breaking down underneath. I can, I can switch and pass that off. Then his eyes get to that inside slot receiver. So you're going to see how he goes from one to two. He kind of works through reading those receivers. So he sees him break inside. Now he starts to slide up. All right, he's communicating like, okay, Okay, you take that. Now he's focused on this inside receiver. And as the receiver continues to work vertical, now he's like, all right, you got it. So he works from one to two. Then he comes back here on this drag route, sits himself down, sees it, jumps in front of it. And that's where he ends up getting that pick six. And I know we said, like, if he's not doing that, he's not necessarily in a position to get that pick six. Jerry Jacobs, he's trailing a little bit in coverage here. He may have still been able to bring him down short. But even if this isn't dropped, he's still in a position to make this tackle. And it's so smooth seeing quarterback, but also reading through both receivers and then not just continuing to follow it up like he's passing it off he drives back down understanding the sticks are right here you got to step in front of those and he does and we end up getting a pick six on that play and I thought that was a big thing with CJ at the end was the recognition of where the sticks were and wearing the where the offense was likely going to try to get with the football lean play that stuck out to me a little bit here and you're going to see it right here from this two eye spot we talk about that lateral movement how about this one boom you see him shoot in front of it there's the shed I, I just wanted to showcase that some of the movement skills that I think was so helpful for us from a guy like Aline McNeil man he's still holding his ground but he's looking good the way that he's moving and then Jack Campbell kind of slicing his way through here but Al uh, Aline McNeil Josh Pascoe gets in on that one that one was clean now this one I'm giving kind of two looks at because this was one of those kind of communication breakdowns and you can see Alex Anzalone is basically calling it out like hey we, you know and I'll show you what, what what I'm seeing on this play in the pass rush range from Aline McNeil Josh Pascoe on this play you can see that Josh Pascoe wins on the guard and because that Hutchinson you can see he's going to slide back inside and kind of fill in not 
give him that pass rush lane. Aline McNeil kicking outside when Charles Harris gets inside. You can see kind of running those games. And uh, this was huge from Hutchinson because he went by, but he was able to break down right here and actually get a hand on the quarterback so he didn't have an opportunity to really take off. Look at it from this perspective of this play. You're going to see lines are going into, again, one of those quarters looks defensively. But because of that, they have three receivers to the left. So they're overloading that side of the field. And I think that's what Alex Anzalone was trying to communicate to the safety position because you're going to see late in the play, there ends up actually being a little bit of a breakdown. Now, we end up not actually giving anything up, which was a big time positive. And you can see here with Alex, if we focus on him first, uh, Cam Sutton kind of communicating with him right there, kind of almost making it seem like, hey man, there might be like a little bit of an option angle route broken to the inside. So he kind of points that out to Alex. Alex starts to kind of drive on that a little bit. And you can see when it doesn't happen, and now Cam Sutton's going to keep the running back who's running that wheel route. Now he's a little bit of a step behind here on the tight end. But that's not where the ball goes. I think it's more so from the safety position here, where you almost kind of want that slide, it feels like. You know, hey, maybe slide a little bit to where there's extra guys. Because on this play, we are going to see is there isn't necessarily that communication. And Kirby kind of ends up just in no man's land just kind of standing here in zone coverage where when you have these two guys and, and they do this a lot where they kind of run these like double post routes like here they're going to run the dig and then they're going to run the post over top you're going to see they're going to stress that communication of the safeties on this play the real wheel route that Cam Sutton has to be responsible for, he's not getting depth to really pick up this route a little bit later in the play over top and allow CJ to be free. On top of it, if you notice the route that CJ is matching up with here, there's a little like hitch. It's almost like a little double move that the receiver plays off before bursting behind the safety on this play. And because of that, Kirby's eyes immediately transition from looking at that to stopping and focusing his attention elsewhere. Now all of a sudden they get behind him with kind of that slight double move. Because here, where this thing is broken into to a post route you would like you know to just have Kirby Joseph pick that up you know run with that then CJ Gardner Johnson could sit down and take away this dig route but on this play you can see CJ didn't necessarily want to pick that up but they ended up kind of in no man's land here as Alex Anzalone ends up picking up this underneath tight end right here Kirby Joseph is sitting on top of that kind of where he's aligned at where his landmark is but you're going to see as this thing gets behind him CJ Gardner Johnson is like oh snap he's not covering that he's still down here I got to go pick that up so now all of a sudden you have Kirby that's just kind of standing here and no man's land. I don't think he ever even recognized that this route was coming on the backside. And all of a sudden you have Sky Moore who opens up running this dig route. And ultimately it was incomplete. So as we had a little bit of a breakdown in this sense, Alex was fired up after the play. Now this was one of my favorites because this spoke to some of the versatility. And I don't even think it was, you know, run that great from the Lions defensively, specifically with Malcolm Rodriguez here. But the big thing for me was that they did it. And it was like, hold up. When you see this look, you're thinking man coverage. Why? Because you have your linebacker out wide with a tight end. I'm thinking man coverage. Like, oh, okay, he's manned up for sure. That's kind of the matchup there. They're just matching up man to man. But for the Lions in this play to then change and run kind of a Tampa 2 type of look defensively, you know, and, and we kind of saw this uh, a little bit earlier in the game, and it was covered really well. You saw how Derek Barnes with Brian Branch and how fluid the communication was. This one maybe wasn't because Malcolm Rodriguez and Brian Branch kind of opened up the exact same way on this play. So you're going to see they're going to both open up to this seam. And when Cam Sutton passes off the underneath route to the underneath zone player, there's nobody necessarily there. So because of that, when both drags or crossing routes come through, now all of a sudden you can see that there's no one really in coverage here. But I do think that it threw up Mahomes a little bit because this looks like it's going to be man coverage, but all of a sudden it's not. And this would have been covered up pretty darn well because, again, this is something that we saw the Chiefs do a few times. They ran these crossing routes, and then this player would come through and then attack here this time. Sometimes they would kind of sit down behind. So it made sense why they're like, hey, man, we have to get depth still in the interior here. You understood that. But both of them did. And if, like, for example, if Malcolm was just sitting down here underneath, right, and maybe you had Brian Branch sit with that, all of a sudden this would have looked really good, I think, at coverage. The the flip side of that though is you can understand why he stays open to this because from a leverage spot you can see Brian Branch is kind of towards the outside Malcolm's towards the inside so if he continues to go this way that could actually end up opening up but ultimately you have Kirby Joseph so I think that was a little bit of a breakdown they communicated after the play like okay hey you know we were both kind of doing the same thing they, they you know gave ourselves high five or whatever but the point is is the versatility to do that to allow a guy like Alex Anzalone out wide to play zone coverage like this and not just be manned up and man which is exactly what it looks like it was really cool to see kind of that flexibility. Like, we're going to show you this, and this looks 100% like it's going to be man coverage, but it's not going to be man coverage. Now, we get to this final drive here, and I'm not showing every play on this. I told you about the cover 3-1 uh, that ended up being basically dropped. They had an open player behind the linebackers. But here's what I wanted to showcase. I wanted to showcase 
CJ Gardner Johnson, man, because that's what stood out to me. After this first play where they had a completion, but it was called back because of a flag. And you're gonna see here again, you have Benito Jones working, you know, kind of a one technique on the on the center here. So you end up getting kind of this two-way go for Charles Harris. You just have to be able to fill when he works inside. It kind of gives you that opening to win inside, but then someone has to fill that lane, and Benito is pretty aware of doing that, gets himself clean, gets to the edge here. Charles wins, draws the holding. But the flip side of that is, as as you're gonna see, they're gonna do the short motion and also give a credit to uh Cam Sutton because Cam Sutton, the next time they got a similar look, you know, kind of was ready for that. In this case, the Lions aren't blitzing. All right, they're they're dropping back. They have one underneath free zone linebacker. And what you notice here is watch CJ Gardner, CJ Gardner Johnson. So they're in man coverage. He's matched up with this tight end. And you'll see on this play that the tight end is going to run a chip, and then he's going to come out and run this drag route. Now with that, you say, okay, he's run this drag route. You pass it off to Alex, who was the free underneath linebacker. That's not blitzing. He was just a free zone linebacker. So you pass it off to Alex like this, and now he can drop out. That's great. But with the timing and him running this kind of speed route across the middle of the field he ends up not getting there quick enough to necessarily help out cam sutton here it's also a really nice well ran route by a sky Moore. he kind of got to the blind spot a little bit opened up sutton and then we know sutton doesn't have the best straight line speed so he was able to create some separation on that deep crossing route and cj garden johnson was just a tick late to really get back and, and make a play on the ball there but the, the the drawn holding is what ended up getting us back on the field the flip side is his two play later they give us a similar look and watch how they cover that now this play lions again watch kind of how they disguise this they're going to a cover three look but it's not what it maybe looks like actually kirby joseph is going to roll back become the single eye safety and then you're going to have cj Gardner johnson dive down and he's going to play that buzz area of this coverage and you're going to see here he's going to end up breaking on this pass boom right there the timing punch that ball out get a pass breakup. So now he's made his first big impact play of this possession. But how about this? Because we're going to come back to it and get another impact play. And I think this was the biggest play of the game. It's one that I absolutely loved. I think this was massive. Lions bring a blitz. So you get another cover one look. Similar lineup you can see here. CJ Gardner-Johnson seemed aware that this was a possibility that they were just going to run across him again because he's communicating with Kirby almost seemingly saying, hey, get outside that way. If they're going to run this way, we can sit outside leverage, right? It's Brian Branch. But if you got to get out that way to take that away because we don't have help we're bringing a blitz there is no off coverage linebacker we're bringing a blitz and cj has the tight end but watch this. So what's going to happen is this receiver is going to run a little bit of like a jerk route. So instead of just immediately crossing the field and allowing Kirby Joseph to step in front of that and take it away, he stops and then he takes off. When he stops, watch Kirby. Kirby sees that and he's like, okay, Cam's got it. I'm going to drop off and take this route that's working vertical. Now all of a sudden they got what they want. They have Cam Sutton behind without help in front of him like that maybe he would be expecting. The flip side is watch CJ on this play. Understanding where the sticks are. This is a third and 20. Watch CJ. So again, the tight end does what he did last time. You kind of delay. Hold CJ in a little bit. Don't immediately take off and run something where he can help out. And I don't, they didn't necessarily probably know they were going to run a blitz here. But let's hold CJ for a second so we can get right behind him. Watch CJ recognize this. He sees the chip again. He's going to run a little chip and then he's going to curl out. And watch CJ just immediately say, yeah, I don't like that. He's chipped in there. They got to get 20 yards on this play. I'm dropping out because this route got us a little bit last time. So he starts to float back and he puts himself in a position where as you can see here, he's going to be in a spot where the, he's going to be able to undercut this route and actually he's going to be the help on this play for Cam Sutton who again would have been a step behind and he ends up dropping the interception but with the blitz the Lions get some pressure so there's really no time to be like I don't want to go there that's where the ball's going and it was CJ Gardner Johnson that stuck out to me that was absolutely beautiful making an impact week one on like multiple impact plays and then here at the final play we go to a tampa two look which we see a lot that way you can you know dive down and take away the underneath route if someone catches it that way not everybody's deep and you can throw it underneath pick it up on the flip side though you want to have two guys deep so you get that look defensively and it's covered up good initially but you're gonna see it's this backside dig route where jerry jacobs passes it off but in terms of the depth with Ken with patrick Mahomes rolling out having this underneath defender they start to kind of get a little shallow understanding where the sticks are and because of that all of a sudden he opens himself up if anything you almost just want to be like i'm oh, man we got to find that we got to find that you know if we see someone else diving down we got to look somewhere else and find that route way easier said than done you know for me but obviously you know but the point is cam sutton here i think ultimately gets a little bit in his face because he covers up his route well and you can see he's throwing back to sky Moore, who drops it but he's really in that passing lane so when i look at this i say okay very catchable hit his hands but did he really see the ball like when it got to him did he flash like cam sutton and a receiver's 
you know, arms right in his face where he couldn't see. Very possible. And then again, shout out to the D line here, not allowing Mahomes to just take off or have a clean pocket. They stay in front of him and, and they end up, you know, taking that away. They don't allow something else to, you know, create off schedule. But ultimately, it's incomplete. The Lions did a pretty good job with discipline, had some breakdowns, gave up some touchdowns. But this team was going to test you more than maybe any team in the league, I thought, coming into this week, especially without Travis Kelsey because, man, they were going to have to get creative and they did. Lions came in with a different approach for this game. We've seen that. We saw that but really in comparison to just last year and uh, finally these new guys were making an impact and that is the big thing for me to be very excited about that man we got some dogs defensively once again i gotta give a shout out to our partner for today but also for the season bet us you can use that top link in the description or go to betus.com slash dose of dion and man seattle there's definitely different game bets that you can take there there's some future bets that you can look at as well i mean look we're plus 700 i believe it is right now to win the nfc so i mean if anything if we keep getting that's just gonna get worse and worse right so if you want to get in now might be the time and again if you deposit $100 at least using that top link in the description you get a 125% deposit match shout out to bet us and shout out to you for watching today's video I'm out